Basically, the military has held this press conference. They've clearly moved to isolate the Muslim Brotherhood in many ways. You know, they've got on board at the press conference. They had not only the secular opposition and representatives of the cops, which are obvious sort of opponents of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's the but Cop Coptic Christian. The Coptic Christian groups, not, not which is a, place, a which, large, yeah. uh, yes, right, uh, a large minority there. Um, but also, more interestingly, the, uh, the leadership of Al-Azhar Mosque, which mm -hmm. is an important uh, Islamist constituency, and even, I believe, members of the Noor Party, which is the Salafist group, which is, a, those are natural allies, particularly the Salafists in some ways, of the Muslim Brotherhood. But they too were there. So I think we're left with a lot of big questions now, um, not only about the process that starts, or restarts now, mm -hmm. but also just what's gonna happen with the military. What lessons did they learn the last time around when they were in charge? which didn't go all that smoothly. Um, so how will they handle this time around? Secondly, how will the Muslim Brotherhood react to this? Well, we've, al we've already got a reaction out of Morsi. Right. He, he rejects it, he calls it a coup, and he calls on his supporters to resist peacefully. My question is, is the, is the key word there resist or is the key word peacefully? Well, that's, that's exactly right. And the, one wonders to what extent there's been discussions between the military and the Brotherhood with some kind of a, of a deal implicit or, or ex, well, beneath the scenes. But to what extent will, they, will the Brotherhood be chased down and persecuted or repressed as they've been in the past? Or will they be invited into this process? And, and thus, how will the Brotherhood react as we go forward? That's a huge question. And, and, and one of the other questions is, is that, you know, how will the military keep uh, the country secure? Because the last thing they need is violence and then that erupting in tit for tat and eventually you have civil war. And so the military yeah. will, that will be presumably first, it, front and foremost in their minds. For sure in the next days and, and even weeks, security, uh, and public order will be the, the top of the priority list. But looking down further, hey, whoever comes out on top of this, and right now it's going to be the military, has got the economy to worry about. Mm. And the, the Egyptian economy was a disaster going into this. And it got worse. And it's going to get worse. It's going to be another year of instability. They've got real economic problems. And, and in fact, let's, let's remind everyone that this is very important. It was the economy that sparked the original revolution. It, 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 one more, of many more, things, yeah. One of many things, but, but it was really that that was really hurting people. Now we're looking out there. It is nighttime now in Cairo. One thing I wonder is how soon before a, a curfew is called and everyone is told to get off the streets, we do not want any violence. I mean, one would think that that would be an obvious choice for the military, although maybe not a very popular one. Well, I think the, the big question is to what extent we've now got sort of competing demonstrations, competing uh, rallies going on between sort of Muslim Brotherhood, Islamist supporters on the one hand, the opposition on the other. They tend to be in different places, but there's no doubt a lot of mixing going on. It, things could get really, really nasty, and then uh, uh, for I'm, sure mixing's they, fine as long as there's no violence. Uh, I think we'd all agree, agree right. with that. But that, but that is, <laughs> tempers are running rather high, and emotions are running rather high right now on both sides.